What's up guys, Eli here, back for a, a tape collection video. Um, I think almost all black metal here, um, but certainly all metal of, of, of one sort or another. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying uh, there, there's going to be a little bit of a dark subject matter on this video. Um, you know, and I, I debated whether I should keep this away from YouTube or I should show it and just be honest. Um, I'll just put it this way. I've listened to black metal for a long time. I think you might know where this is going. A long time, um, decades even, and there was a time, you know, when the internet was small or, or I wasn't even really using it yet. Um, I wasn't really aware of this thing that you <laughs> have probably heard of called NSBN, National Socialist Black Metal. Um, I... You know, I got into some of those bands, you know, not knowing what it was. So I'll just, I, I'll just preface, preface this by saying um, I don't support that that ideology, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, I, <laughs> ever since I've started this channel, you know, five years now, I've debated. Should I have the NSBM talk? Should I give my opinion on it? And I'll be honest, the reason I haven't done that is because I've seen so many, you know, metal YouTubers you know, kind of give their take on NSBM um, and kind of try to defend why they listen to it and are okay with it, but don't support the ideology. And it always falls flat, always falls flat. And it always, they always, always, always end up looking stupid. Um, so I'm like, I'm no better than these guys. I'm not going to, I don't want to look stupid. I, I do already. Um, but I guess, you know, I'll just, I'll just give my, you know, my take is, Yes, I'll be full on honest with you. I do like some bands that fall under the NSBM category. Um, they tend to be the ones that are more cryptic about it. I don't, I don't, I don't go after albums that have swastikas on the cover. But sure, I, I in the past have enjoyed some black metal albums made by artists with questionable uh, ideologies or political views. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, I don't, I don't think I have anything that's that's too extreme, but. You know, you might, I just wanted to warn you, you know, if you're, if you're super sensitive, you know, to, uh, to NSBM and stuff like that, you might just not want to watch this one, or you might not want to watch most of my cassette tape videos. Um, and maybe you'll not want to watch any of my videos ever again. Um, and I totally get that. Um, I, you know, I put thought into this and this is kind of where I came, the conclusion I came to, I'm, I'm going to show what I have. Um, <clears throat> and you know, maybe I'll learn a thing or two, uh, but you know, the, I'll, I will say the older I get, um, I absolutely have kind of, uh, as far as the stuff that I buy currently, I, I certainly don't, I don't, I, I can't remember the last time I like bought, you know, a band, uh, you know, an album with, with, with like National Socialist ties, even with like one member. Uh, of course, it's going to happen uh, in, in the black metal world, let's be honest, it's going to happen occasionally, even by accident. But uh, um, yeah, most of these I've had for years and years. Um, or, you know, some were given to me, some I just acquired in trades and stuff like that. But anyways, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, some of these that I'm going to show right now might somewhat fall under that category. And, and I'll be honest, I probably listen to some black metal bands that, that uh, have even more extreme views than I know. Because I don't often, you know, a lot of those European black metal bands, you know, their lyrics aren't even in English. I, I, I can't even read the lyrics. You know, I buy the album. Okay, there's no... There might be something, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll go ahead and just get started here. I just wanted to preface uh, preface this video with with that. Like I said, I hope I don't lose, it's not that I'm worried about losing viewers or subs or anything, but I just hope I don't lose any, um, you know, I like a lot of you guys and I, I would not want to lose uh, your respect. Um, that said, let's just, I mean, if you, you know, my, my, my videos, my comment section is completely open. I don't edit comments I don't delete comments um, if you know if this is the time where you want to state your your views on on uh, NSBM go ahead and say it um, I'm, I'm not gonna argue with you at all so uh, yeah I mean it's if, if we can't discuss things in life if we can't have civil discussions then I, I don't think um, this is the world I'd want to be in anyways so anyways this uh, first five this are all gonna be from a band out of uh, is it Ukraine? Yeah, all out of Ukraine. Um, I, I'll, I'll be honest, this is a, a fine example. I, I listened to this band for a good amount of time, a good number of years be, before I learned that um, I've never read any of, the, any of their lyrics. I think this band is one of those bands that doesn't um, focus on, 
on ideology or, or politics, but they do have members that have been in bands that do, and, you know. Um, no, if I have any viewers from Ukraine, I, I t <laughs> don't be offended when I say this, but, I mean, obviously in the Ukraine black metal scene, um, there's a lot. There's a lot of, of dodgy politics, so. Um, so the band we're going to be talking about, Astrophase, out of, like I said, out of Ukraine. Um, <clears throat> This, uh, the first one that I have is a uh, is actually their second demo. Um, this was uh, originally it was released in '97. Uh, this tape came out in 2003 um, on Stuza Productions. So yeah, Astrophase. We got the attraction, Heavens and Earth. Ooh, lighting. Look at that fucking glare. There you go. Um, like I said, it's their second demo. Um, so Astrophase play kind of a. Um, kind of an astral focused, uh, kind of at times symphonic black metal, um, very fast and furious. You know, you could take, you could probably use, you know, they definitely sound Ukrainian. You could probably use Hate Forest or even at, at times Druk as a, as a comparison, although they don't sound, you know, they definitely have their own sound. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. I mean, I, I love their music. Um, next we're going to go to their, uh, this is their first, yeah, this is their first full-length album, uh, originally re uh, released in 93. Um, I have the tape, the Pussy God uh, Records tape version that came out in 98. Um, so you have their first album, Dying Emotions Domain. First album from this band. So like I said, um, this band, at least from what, I, from what I've read and from what I've discovered, um, maybe not overtly... Um, national Socialist, uh, but I, you know, I, I think they definitely have members that have been in other projects that are, um, and you know, with with this kind of black metal, dude, it's so hard. There's always one member that, that has played on some comp. I don't know. Anyways, the, <laughs> these guys aren't, you know, I wouldn't exactly lump them in with like Aryan blood and stuff like that, but um, they definitely, if, if you're sensitive, if you're really, really, really sensitive to that, and I don't blame you if you are. Um, yeah, I guess you might want to avoid it. Or just do your own research. Whatever suit you can find. Um, next. What do we have here? Second full-length album. Um, from 2001. From uh, Oriana. What's it called? Oriana Productions. Something like that. Uh, second full-length album. The Eyes of the Beast. Astrophase. Um, yeah. Really, really good album. I, I honestly, I like all their stuff. I have, a, I have a hard time choosing. I don't think I have any favorites. Um, really, I mean, I think their whole discography is is really, really stellar. Um, I can't, yeah, I have a hard time choosing. I kind of just listen to them all about about the same. Um, anyways, now I have the third album. This is uh, it's got a Ukrainian title, um, but I believe it translates to uh, Ancestor Shadows. I think. Um, yeah, shit, when did this come out? Sorry. <laughs> I thought I knew what year this one came out. Early 2000s, anyways. But yeah, Ancestor Shadows. Um, Oriana. Yeah, this came out on Oriana. An Ancient Nation. Which, those are labels. Pff, those are labels commonly associated with NSBM, I won't lie to you. Um, I'll be honest. But half the reason why I'm doing this, or half the reason why I didn't just decide not to is... Um, yeah, you know, I've, I've seen other YouTubers who I think pulled it off, <laughs> uh, you know, pulled off having a reason for listening to some of these bands without um, being associated with the ideology, namely um, Sean Count Blagrath. Um, he was, he's one of the metal YouTubers that I first watched and, you know, that inspired me the most. I always thought he was a really good dude, and, I mean, he probably listens to more NSBN than I do, and um, I just, I felt like he made a, I don't think his argument... No offense to Sean, I don't think his argument was particularly good, but he, he still made a good example of somebody who um, I respected and I and I fully, uh, you know, I, I fully saw him as someone who absolutely didn't associate himself with, with you know, National Socialist bullshit, but still, you know, enjoyed some of the bands. Um, so anyways, I'll, <laughs> I'm really not going to go into this again because, like I said, I don't want, I don't want to get myself into... Um, <clears throat> the classic metal YouTuber position where they're trying to defend uh, 
you know, trying to, trying to basically come up with like this really uh, intelligent sounding um, description and, and always just falling flat on their face. I, I've always wanted to avoid that, but anyways, yeah, these, a band like, a band like this, I mean, this is about, about as deep as I get into NSBM. I do like some of the Blaze Birth Hall stuff. Like I said, I, I got into those bands um, before I knew, uh, before I knew what NSBM even fucking was. Um, so, I mean, that's just me being honest. Uh, yes, I still have the albums. Yes, I still listen to them. I think they're good albums, you know, um. I just, you know, I just don't believe in the ideologies. Uh, none of those bands are really p are putting out any material anyways. So I'm not, you know, I'm not buying anything from them still, you know, now that I know. But anyways, um, what do we have here? We have the uh, fifth, fifth full length album from 2002. Um, shit. I don't remember. This, this one also has a Russian title or a Ukrainian title or whatever. Um, I don't remember what this stands for, but yeah. <laughs> Fifth album from 2002. Oh yeah, this stands for Heritage. Yeah, that's right. This came out in Oriana and Ancient Nations. Uh, yes. That, Heritage. Oh, this is one of my favorites, by the way. One of my favorites from them. Um, okay, so we're out, of, we're out of that trench. Um, but not completely. There, <laughs> there's some more sort of NS, NSBM-ish stuff here. Um, next, we have this French uh, rehearsal demo. I just have this. Um, I've only listened to it once. I don't know why I still have it because I, I don't really find it you know, all that great. First of all, I'm not really a big fan of like instrumental black metal, and that's what this is. Um, this band, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a French, or no, it's Canadian? It's a Canadian band, I think. Um, Auf Crema, I guess, which probably stands for something sketchy that I never bothered to look up. Um, <laughs> this came out on Tour de Garde, which um, I think that this was released because... I think the guy that runs Tour de Garde was, was in this band. I think that's the only reason this was ever released. Um, uh, maybe you've heard it and maybe you like it. Personally, for me, this doesn't really do any, doesn't do anything for me. Um, you get rehearsals from 2002 and 2003. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't. I've never really seen anyone mention it, but Tour de Garde is kind of a, um, a pretty well-known black metal label, so there's that. Next we have, this one's a pretty cool little gem, actually. Um, this was released on uh, Winter, Winter Reich Records. This is a, um, I think it was a French black metal band, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, these guys kind of made waves. They're actually, I think they're still going. Um, I remember they signed to Eisenwald, um, and they weren't going not that long ago. They might, I think they still are, but I haven't really heard much from them. Um, this was kind of a, this was a pretty popular demo, and these guys were, were, pretty popular back in the shit early mid 2000s i don't really hear anyone talk about them anymore and this this is a pretty rare demo so we're talking about arvin dill with their second demo part two winter um this is a pretty rare tape by the way um this is a really really cool demo of just really uh very wintry cold atmospheric black metal um this band has done a lot of cool stuff like i said this is a pretty rare demo i think i have a few of them Actually, if anyone, I mean, just if any of you were looking for a copy of this, um, limited to 100 copies, and I, I think I have three or four of them, so, um, yeah. If, you, if anyone was looking for it and they wanted to buy one, I'll sell it to you for cheaper than anyone on Discog, so. Um, just throwing that out there, but yeah, Arvind Dill, you might, if you've been into black metal for a long time, especially in like the earlier 2000s, you probably remember them because they were kind of making waves. And then we have one of my favorites. Uh, this is probably easily my favorite out of this whole stack. I absolutely love this band. This is the first um, full-length album from this Australian uh, uh, depressive black metal band. Um, we're talking about Austere. You might rem remember this if you've been into black metal for a good amount of time. You, I mean, this, this album made waves, and I still think it's great. Um, this came out in 2007 on... Uh, uh, what label was this? It was was it Winter Reich also? I think that's the Winter Reich logo. But anyways, yeah. Um, just masterful, depressive black metal. It's I, I definitely call it depressive, but it's not like that. I don't like using these fucking stupid, like, cheesy terms. But it, it doesn't sound like that, you know, like, bedroom black metal. Um, there's a difference between that, where it's just, like, one guy and his computer, you know, and an actual 
band, you know, making quality music, and that's that's what austere were. Um, this is this is well played, well written, just soul soul wrenching, tortured black metal. Um, but I, I believe, you know, to this day, still still stands the test of time. So made a lot of waves when it came out, and all you know, fifteen years later, I still love it. So um, this next one definitely has a dude. <laughs> in this band with a lot of ties to the NSBM scene. And yet again, this is a band that I was listening to where I was just, I just thought like, oh, this is, you know, pagan black metal. And it, it I mean, he does make some good music. Um, I don't know a lot about the dude. I just know that <laughs> years after I got into his, you know, some of his, some of his shit, I would hear, I would hear a lot more about him. Nothing in detail. I just, I know that he, he you know, he's in a lot of like really, really NS type projects, but, uh, we're talking about Bill Skirnir, very popular in the NS, uh, NSBM uh, Underground. Um, this is the only album I have from him. It's his first album from 2002, Flames of Purification. Uh, this came out on uh, Tanhu Records. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Last but not least, we'll, we'll leave, we'll, we'll finish off the video in a more wholesome oh, wholesome fashion. We're going to talk about some uh, U.S. traditional heavy metal out of Philly. Um, this came out in uh, just uh, 2020, actually. This was sent to me my, by my good buddy Rick over at the Dreadful Minutes, uh, Blazing Right, with the uh, this is their debut EP. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pronounce that. I don't even know what language it is. Anyway, it's their debut EP. Apparently, they had a full length out this year, uh, or I guess you know, now it's last year. They had a full length out in 2021, and I heard it was really good. Um, this came out on a cool, uh, cool gold shell, by the way. I didn't really show any of those tapes because they're all, I think they're all dubbed tapes. So just blank. Um, but anyways, yeah, um, I listened to this one quite a bit, actually, when I got it. Um, this was a lot, I saw a lot of potential here. Um, yes, I, I heard, I definitely heard a good band. Um, I, I heard a band that needed to make some improvements. They needed to tighten up their songwriting a little bit. Um, everything just needed a little tightening up, but they had a lot of potential. So, potential. so I'm really, really curious to hear their, their full-length album from, from last year. Um, uh, I, I want to see if they did make those necessary adjustments. I do feel like a lot of metal bands nowadays, it's like they'll come out with a, you know whatever their first recording is, and... Then they'll come out with a second and a third album, and they don't really ever get any better. They just kind of all kind of sound like the same band, which always disappoints me because, like, you know, not to be one of those people, but back in, you know, back in the 80s and even in the 90s, you'd hear bands, you know, you, you would hear them progress as they got, you know, you would hear them on every album, they'd be better musicians and better songwriters. And maybe that's because um, those bands could survive off their music. <laughs> so they, you know, they had all their time to devote. That's probably a lot of it, to be honest. But that is what bums me out with a lot of metal bands nowadays is so a lot of times you just, you get the band, the band that you hear on their debut recording, that's kind of the band that you get throughout their career um, because they aren't living off their music and they do have to work, you know, full-time jobs and they're not, they're not, you know, spending every minute of their day mastering their craft. So I guess that's the reason, but uh, it's, it, it still doesn't mean that, you know, bands can't can't improve. I think sometimes some bands I think could try harder. I don't know. Anyways, I'm, it's not for me to say, but uh, anyways, that's all I got for now. Um, I have a couple cool videos that I'm working on. I just thought I would pump this out just for fun. Um, I don't know when I'm going to upload it, but uh, I, I got, yeah, I got some, some big stuff in the works. Um, for one, I am going to, I'm going to take the take the dive a little bit. I'm going to start doing more reviews. Um, I've only done a few in the past and I've never done a review of a current album. I've only reviewed stuff that was like already out for a year or two or maybe even more. And, and nobody really cared about them. I think, I don't know. I was like, you know, reviewing albums that no one's really heard of anyways. And, you know, they're probably sold out. Um, I'm going to start doing reviews of albums that are either were just released or aren't released just yet because I do get promos. Um, there's one label in, uh, specifically that I get promos from. Uh, so I think I'm going to start doing, you know, actual current reviews. 
And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to actually, you know, I'm going to actually put some effort into it. I'm not just going to listen to the album one time and then, you know, do a half ass review that's, you know, three minutes or whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to actually put some effort into it. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do, literally. The, and I used to write reviews all the time. But since I've had my, my YouTube channel, I've always wanted to do, you know, I've always wanted to do more reviews. Um, like I said, I've done a few. They just weren't really very focused. And so I'm going to start doing more of that. And um, as far as movies, I'm going to do a... I think I've been talking about this a little bit, but I'm going to do a... Um, kind of a... Not a comprehensive list, but uh, all the like the love H.P. Lovecraft-related uh, movies I have in my collection. Um, I'm going to do a video about that. Um, just talking about all the movies that I have that are either you know directly inspired by Lovecraft or indirectly I think it'll be really fun I'm sure a bunch of people have done it but uh, I you know I have a lot in my collection to talk about so anyways that's it that's all I got uh, Louis says hello he's right behind me we need to go on a walk he's he's been uh, pissed off at me all day it's been snowing fucking cold bullshit so anyways thanks for stopping by guys we will talk soon cheers